Are you ready for a job that gets you more? UPS is hiring now. As a warehouse worker, you'll earn up to $21 per hour, and you might even be eligible for a program that helps you with thousands of dollars for college, in many cases tuition free. Search and apply now at upsjobsky.com. Card Nation, this is attorney Alex White with SueDistractedDriver.com. Our law firm is a team of dedicated attorneys ready to fight for you. If you get injured because of someone else's negligence, their insurance company already has a legal team, and now so do you. If you or a friend or loved one are injured, find your attorney at SueDistractedDriver.com. This is an advertisement. You're listening to The Diener Show, presented by OPC Pest Services on ESPN 680, 1057, and 93.9 The Ville. Now, here's Drew Diener and Perrin Johnson. Hey, uh, Little City FC, our next broadcast of them is coming your way on Saturday as they are at Memphis FC. That'll be 745 uh, with the pregame, 8 o'clock with the play-by-play. Don't forget to catch Soccer City on Thursdays from uh, 6 to 7. Seven. Uh, we are here with you. We will uh, uh, take your calls. We got open lines there after a weekend. Still haven't heard from uh, any people that went to Louisville Live, and it looked just like a great scene over there uh, at Churchill Downs. Uh, that was, uh, you know, look, look, it was Louisville fans had a good weekend. I know you're looking for impending doom this morning right around the corner, but you had Friday night, this walk, essentially a walk-off win uh, with an interception return uh, for a touchdown. You have Louisville live on Saturday. You have Lamar come back last night, apparently after a couch got me again. Oh, you missed a good couch one. couch is undefeated, man. And I thought I did, I did what I always do, watch with friends outside for the first half. I'm good. Back to the second half, boom. Um, think I can? Oh, I can just sit down on the couch, boom, fall asleep. So, um, so it was. Look, it's um, it's it's a it was a bounce back weekend certainly for Louisville fans. The negativity around this town last week was just so palpable. Um, and even you know, like I said at the game that I when I went to EKU, even the people that were there, it was just like you walk up to people and it's like instead of hello, it's like. Rrr. You know, it's just grumble, 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 grumble. And look, I, I, since I know U of L fans, like I know U of L fans, UK also was sucking win against Chattanooga. So there's another oh, thing to yeah. add yeah, to the victory I mean, lap. I mean, yeah. Go ahead, oh. enjoy yourself. And by the way, my buddy uh, Chris Lyons, he goes by Chinchilla. He said uh, <laughs> he goes a, by Chinchilla. Yeah, it's a nickname. It's a great you know? name. He's, a, <laughs> hey, he, hey, hey, he's part of the Saint X Mafia. You know, whatever. But uh, he said, uh, "How about this one?" He said, "Friday finish on Floyd." That's not bad. Too long. Too long. I think. Yeah. Yeah. Has That's to be shorter. Long. Just do finish on Floyd. Take the Friday out. Yeah, just finish on Floyd. Yeah, it's it's just I don't know. I think since we don't have one, we're not going to you know, be able to name it. Yeah, but believe me, Louisville fans are feeling the, the you know feeling good about themselves because Saturday um, at the at, at the uh, at the camp out, the the proprietor of the projector uh, was a Kentucky fan, so that was the game on the big screen. So we were the the Louisville fans that I were like you know not into watching that game, but as it was getting closer, they wandered over there and were like. Hey, what's the score over here? You all uh, win? You know, what's going on? I haven't, I haven't checked the score yet. Yeah. Oh, is it close? And so, yeah, it was good to see. It was good to see a little swagger from uh, from Louisville fans for the first time in a while. I never doubt either fan base's ability to find a way to have a victory lap on one another. Oh, yeah. It's fascinating. It to was. Me. It was. Uh, hey, they hey, won. Hey, what's the score? Oh, you guys. Oh, wow, I thought you got to be up more than this. Man, it was. It felt good to see them sweat a little bit because I've heard nothing but loud noise out of that, yeah. that side of the uh, that side of the state. So it, was, yeah. it felt it felt really good to see them sweat. Uh, we got two lines open. Let's go to Patrick up next. Patrick, welcome and good morning. Ninth around the Ville ESPN six eighty. Morning, guys. Yeah, I, I loved uh, being able to victory lap this weekend too. I, one of my UK buddies was was trying to trying to soften the blow and say how good Chattanooga was, and I was just like, "Dude, you're they're FCS, right? No, they're one double A, yeah. <laughs> right? No, but uh, I have a funny story uh, about about the interception, so or both interceptions actually. So uh, I'm sitting in the, the the expansion in the lower level, you know. Um, and there's a guy sitting one row in front and a little bit over, uh, and he's been hitting the half price beers pretty hard. <laughs> well, uh, the, uh, uh, Malik throws his interception. Uh, and I think we go to a TV timeout cause we're, I think we get to stew on it for a little bit. Well, you hear this like crash and you look over and he, and he spiked his beer into the ground oh, and it ended up getting all over the guy oh, in front of him. And next thing you know, they're uh 
uh, standing up face to face, and then the next guy over stands up, and the next guy over stands up. And next thing you know, there's six grown men about ready to get in a brawl over this interception <laughs> that caused the guy to throw a beer. And everybody's focusing on that, and all of a sudden you hear this loud cheer, and you look up and you see Alderman running down the field to win the game, and everybody pays attention to the game. And then you look over after we score, and those six guys that are about ready to kill each other are in a giant group hug jumping up and down. <laughs> so, it's, a, it's, it's a classic example of winning cures all. It's uh, look, music and sports bring people together like nothing else. I mean, there's it's nothing, truer words have never been spoken. That it is, you end up hugging people that you wouldn't ever come across in your daily life. No, they they were they were about ready to go at it. You could see it in their faces, and, and losing wouldn't have helped, obviously. Yeah. And uh, no, as soon as it, as soon as that uh, the tide turned, it was hilarious. They were smiling ear to ear, and and. All six of them hugging and <laughs> stop the fight. That's great, Alderman. Of all the things he thought he thought he accomplished by scoring the game-winning touchdown, stopping a six-person drunken brawl uh, is, is, is probably uh, Alderman for world peace. Yes, yes, <laughs> Alderman for mayor. I've gotten that a couple of times. Yes, a, a, absolutely. <laughs> Oh goodness! All right, Pre- appreciate the call there. Yeah, I, did you see? The, I saw the video. Is that the was it in Cleveland where you had a bunch of dumb drunk fans trying to fight each other in the parking lot? It went on for about two minutes. This is every fan base. Like, understand, <laughs> yeah. Philadelphia gets a lot of this crap. It's every fan base this happens to. I promise. There's really yeah, good y'all. video of it though. Yes, I got I, I got to find it. Well, it's y'all the, did y'all did throw snowballs at Santa Claus sixty years ago. <laughs> I'm just messing with you, man. I just messing with you. Let's go to Bill up next. Two lines open. Two six seven nine six eight. Bill, good morning. Hey, guys, good morning. Um, one comment about the game the other night is you know, this kind of thing never happens to us. I mean, it's always, you know, us being on the right end of something like this, it seems like that we, uh, and especially with the interception right before the interception, uh, so it's nice to see something good happen uh, for us in that respect. And then uh, I'll just follow up and listen to your comments. Uh, how about the winterception? Winterception? Okay. Winterception. Yeah. Then, I, I want to get behind. I, I'm, I'm I, like, I, like, I, like I like it. I like what you're trying. I like it. I like it. Yeah, how about this? It's land. How about just call it the pick? Just call it the pick. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. You can tell we don't do. <laughs> any newspaper clippings around here. Well, it's, um, <laughs> oh, I mean, it's, a, the, I'll tell you the thing that was sort of, you had to delay your reaction to it was there was about 10 to 12 minutes. I'll go back and look in real time of actual time between the interception and them actually running the last 12 seconds off the clock. It took a long time uh, to, to get that, uh, you know, to, to get from, Pick six to win it to, all right, kick off. All right, do your stupid lateral play where you get your quarterback injured. Yeah. You know, it's like, uh, it's, it, just, it just took a long, it was delayed celebration. It was like, all right, all right, all right, we're still waiting around. We're still waiting around. Okay, all right, now we can celebrate. Now I can celebrate around here. So, um, September 6th, I don't know. And everybody keeps, I, I, the video of Gunter Brewer being stoic as this thing is uh, being returned. I keep getting a lot of people going, you see, how could he, how could he be so... Uh, so stoic. I can there. appreciate that. Somebody's yeah. got to keep their head. Yeah, somebody's got to. Yeah, exactly. Uh, let's go to Jason up next. Jason, welcome in everything to Billy ESPN six eighty. Well, what's going on, Drew and Perrin? I, I was uh, up on a vacation up in Destin at Tail Fins, eating the best chicken wings in the world, and then you know, of course, Central Florida throws that first touchdown. It was like, here we go again. Yeah. So we go by the house at halftime, and all the Kentucky fans went to sleep, and uh, uh, I was sitting there watching it with. Uh, an Ohio State and an Indiana fan, and I mean, when that interception happened, it was just up and hopping and jumping and screaming and hollering. I think we woke the whole house up, and <laughs> you know, it all was well in the world again. Yeah, I mean, that's that's ever that's pretty much everybody's reaction, right? I mean, you're sitting there watching this game that you assume I mean, it's very rare that you 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 watch a game that you just assumed you've lost in miserable fashion. And then one play later, you have this, you know, the miracle on Floyd Street or something. I think that's what somebody else texted in. The miracle on Floyd Street. I don't know. Um, yeah, and uh, so many people are texting about Gunner Gunner Brewer, <laughs> just being just stoic right there. Like, he, how is he a living, walking? Uh, you know, he says somebody says Brewer is a living, walking, breathing farmers commercial. Um, Section says official uh, throws a flag in the end zone. Not sure about that. Um, let's see. 
Texture says, yeah, some of these texts, we got, we got some, some of them, the talk to text uh, definitely doesn't pull Some of y'all got to work on y'all talk to text a little bit better, yeah, please. Yeah, your Siri y'all. sucks. Yeah. <laughs> we love y'all, but y'all yeah. got to work on this talk to text. text uh, Satterfield even said divine intervention, intervention after the game. Process is right on. Um, again, did you all see the video of Gunter Brewer stone cold watching the INT return with no emotion? You mean Cold Stone? <laughs> yeah, right. Cold Stone, the way I say it, right? Cold Stone, Gunter Brewer. Yes, Cold Stone. <laughs> You didn't hear that last week. It was I got stone cold. Steve Austin turned around into a fake ice cream version of him. Cold of uh, Cold Stone. Steve Maybe Austin. they should make that flavor. You know, yeah, you might I mean, be onto something. I, I, you I actually might think, be onto yeah, something. That would have been a good uh, partnership. Yeah. Um. So yeah, I, this is. So we'll get look. You get your thoughts on this. We got a number of. Um, we got all kinds of sound we can play. I do want to. One thing I haven't heard is this sound. Uh, again, I, I'm up uh, on camp out all weekend. Uh, and all you camping purists, y'all can bite it. Oh, that's not camping. Okay, you bring your tent. See, if you get 220 dads and kids to come for 35 straight years, if everybody's bringing a tent. No. It's called glamping. Thir- that's yeah, all you do, 31 bro. RVs, televisions. That's what we do. Print it, T-shirts. You know, we're not doing if, – if, if it was – this thing would have ended after five years if people were using tents. So you camping purists can bite it. I don't care. You don't oh. want to live off the land? No, bro? I don't. <laughs> want. You no. know what I want? I want to pay somebody. I want to rent an RV from them. Yeah. I want them to set it up. I want them to tear it down. I want to pay them for their work. And I want to give them a shout-out, too, because I've uh, – let's see. Uh, I forgot uh, their, their – um, it was great. After I got there and they had set it up, they were like, oh, you know, we actually listened to the show. Like, oh, this is great. So uh, – Kristen Harden and, and Ray Harden, uh, they also have a business with White Lab Woodworking. Uh, the guy gave me a uh, barrel, barrel top. Is that what you call those things? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, afterwards, well, so uh, shout out to them. But no, I want I want to I want to rent an RV. I want you know I want tents there. I want TVs and I want the kids to run wild and you people with your tents. You know, have fun when it rains. Yeah, enjoy the bears. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And the raccoons. Yeah, yeah exactly, yeah. exactly. I but I haven't heard the Chris Mack sound from uh, Louisville Live. Um, where, you know, again, and people that are wondering why it wasn't streamed, I mean, all you have to do is look at the host. It's not really uh, um, that difficult. Maria Taylor no longer works for ESPN. So they're not they, going- they would have the rights to do it. So yeah. um, they've got contractual uh, obligations there that, uh, you know, and so what? So Louisville Live, you have to be there live to go <laughs> see it. So 20, it's people not like there, there. wasn't plenty of opportunities uh, to go see it. But Chris Mack, how long is this? Is this like, uh, like 30 seconds? Okay. Unless you want the whole thing, which is three minutes. Well, let's just hear this part. This is him on his suspension. I mean, it is what it is. You know, I'm not um, I'm not really going to comment on it. You know, it's uh, I feel like the team's in great hands uh, with Mike Pegues. Um, do I wish it was different? Yes. But, you know, when I was a little kid and kicked the soccer ball in the stands after we tied a game, my dad spanked me and, you know, I moved on. So, um you know, that's all I'm going to say about that. But team's in great hands. They're in great spirits. We've got a couple months to prepare until November 9th. And Mike will do a great job in my absence while I'm gone. And I'm excited to get back when that day comes against Michigan State. So, yep, he knows the schedule down there. I still don't know what he's going to do for those three weeks. I still go fishing. <laughs> what is he, what is he do? Three whole weeks. Right, go to Roosters. Watch the game. <laughs> Hey, tell, invite everybody. <laughs> I mean, yeah, he else? should. He should host watch parties. Like, yeah, he really should. should well, I mean, that would only be if also, Eric Wood is there. <laughs> that would be awesome. <laughs> yes. I, I'm just saying. I, I don't. Maybe. Hey, you know, plot twist. Throw it. In, just throwing it out there. You all in the AD apartment. Like, let's let's make it happen. Like, you do it at the Brown Williams Club for all we care. Yeah. I mean, I mean, I'm all for it. Uh, let's see. Extra says, I feel like a big part of this team's identity for many years is the defense allows too much I mean, yards on third and fourth down conversions. Can't get off the field. They finally made enough of those plays with UCF to keep it close and be able to win. Yes, give a lot of points and yards, but that's what UCF does. Lots of praise should go to that defense. Uh, Malik was amazing. The defense really stood tall in some big plays. And the, and the defense was good late. I mean, the good in the, in the second half. I mean, they were nope, really like, good. Unfortunately, Q Cole's play, I think, will be forgotten to time. Oh, because man. that, in my mind, that's the play of the game. Outside of the yeah. interception, that's the play. I mean, there's that play. There's the throwback pass. That too. That, but, but Cole, you, we have... Uh, uh, the, the throwback pass is really amazing because of the fact that they said they never worked all week in practice and they went to it in a game. Yeah. A uh, crucial a crucial game and a crucial moment in the game. So here, here's what it sounded like on, on that call. Gabriel ready to uncork. It's a deep ball. Batted away. Caden Robinson had a step and it's knocked away by Q Cole. What a play. Well, and it looked like Cole had undercut this ball and it was going to go right over his outstretched hands but he had a beat on it and just at the last possible second sticks that right paw up and knocks it away to force another UCF punt yeah I mean it's as good a play as you'd see defensively technically 
you know, fundamentally, like for that's, a cornerback. That's the game. Yeah. They score that touchdown. He misses that ball. That's it. Yeah. Curtains. It's, uh, it's again, but you're right. It gets lost in the shuffle because I'm going back. I went back the next day and I'm, I'm watching it uh, the next morning. And, um, you know, because after like, you know, 72 beers at camp out, you kind of got to, you know, re, re, rewatch some Good things. For you. Yeah. And I'm like, <laughs> oh, yeah, that's right. That was a phenomenal play. You know, I mean, it's as good as it gets, man. In the beer garden. Yes, sir. Yes. But, but you know, I, like I said, I, I, I'm, uh, that, that game was amazing. And, you know, those kids were resilient, especially with the, um, adversity they faced with the energy in there. And Scott Satterfield mentioned in his comments, though, we don't work, they're not worried so much about the outside, outside noise they're focused on going out there and competing hard. Yeah. And they came out there and they competed hard, Drew. And uh, I'm just really amazed. Like I said, my only worries, my only two worries are I want us to see, I want us to be a better running team mm-hmm. because while Malik is a great running option at quarterback because he can throw the ball and in the, in the, in the offensive line gave him some time to throw, I don't want him taking that many hits in a game. Mm-hmm. And I think if we can get that running game going, besides him running the ball and being who he is as an athlete, I think we'll be more complete. And I want to see if we can do that against Florida State. And, uh, and watching Florida State play against Wake Forest, it was really interesting how Wake Forest is just moving the ball all over the field against them, and I hope Louisville could tap into some of that film and see if they can find find some places where they can take advantage of Florida State. Well, it's it's just crazy how different emotions are week again week to week. I mean, after week one, Florida State, oh my gosh, they look they look great. You know, they play Notre Dame right down to the wire, and and then it's oh my god, they lost to Jacksonville State, uh, you know, in the last play of the game, and then and then they're getting you know worked over uh, by Wake Forest. I mean, thirty five fourteen. I mean, they're just it's just. And it's not even close. I mean, Wake Forest is up like 14 nothing before you can blink in that game. Uh, and and so, you know, but at the same time, this this not a team in Louisville that is good enough to, you know, go down there and take Florida State lightly. I mean, as much as you can win all these games, it's going to take that level of effort, you know, so that, so that you don't lose it. And um, you, and you got to kick a team when they're, when they're down. I mean, you, the conference, conferences every year, some team gets swallowed whole in every conference. I mean, there, there's always something where there's a, there's a, you know, confluence of different factors that go to just make a crappy season. What you can't do is lose one of those games against one of those teams. You got to kick them while they're down. And that's what, you know, I think they're going to try to do this, obviously, this week against uh, Florida State. So if you want to get in, 267 9680, that's our number to do so. You can text away to the UPS Jobs text line uh, at 437 9680. Um, let me, let's go back to a little bit of Satterfield um, on number three there. the Because uh, a lot had been made of, you know, the play calling. And there was definitely. More creativity. They pulled out all the stops here uh, in this game. Defense, and we say, all right, how can we attack this defense? We just felt going in that they played a lot of man, and so we felt like that our guys could get open in that man coverage and we'd be able to throw the football. So that's you know, that's why we were hitting some of those early in the, in the game. Um, you know, and, and then probably could have hit some more. We go back and watch that film. We, wasn't, we were not perfect in that. Um, you know, we had a couple of snafus on, on protections that, you know, had a guy freak twice. And then – um, but, but, yeah, we thought we could take advantage of that. But we knew we also needed to run the football. You know, coming in this game, you know, watching them, they shut Boise down the second half. They could not run the ball. Uh, Bethune could not run the ball. Um, so we were a little concerned with that. We felt we needed to get Cunningham involved in the running game. We did early, hit some big runs, um, and then hitting some of those inside runs with our running backs. So Mitchell, I thought, ran hard tonight and really hard. I mean, we played four backs tonight. I mean, they, they were running hard. They were blocking. I mean, you know, and it's, it takes everybody. You know, so I was proud of all, all those backs. Yeah, and it allows you to be creative when you're able to, you know, move move the pile, run the ball. And, uh, I mean, this is the team that, you know, while one of their games was against Bethune-Cookman, the other was Boise State. And they had the number one rush defense in the country. So not even – it wasn't just Bethune-Cookman that couldn't run the ball. It was it was Boise that didn't run the ball. And they had, you know, no problem. And I think it was – you know, Malik Cunningham, while you want to keep him safe and upright, his legs are a part of the package, you know. It's it's just you, you have to have him, you know, out there making those plays with his legs. Otherwise – you know, you're not using the full arsenal with him, and whether he stay does he stay upright for all 12 games? I don't know, uh, but you needed every every ounce of him for that one. Yeah, and, and from and from the receiving standpoint, obviously we 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 pointed out Marshawn Ford and what he did that game, and he worked his tail off. Uh, I would like to see the the Mitchell kid get get a little more reps and get a couple more catches, and because I, I, when he gets the ball, he's hard, he's a hard guy to tackle in that game. He only had two receptions, but those two plays that he made were great plays. And I want I would like to see him get more involved in the offense. Well, he had a bunch of carries. Oh, he did. He did as well. 16 carries, yeah. Yeah, I mean, so like I mean, I li- I liked what he did with that, but also I'm sorry. I, I'm I'm getting my names mixed up. Justin Marshall. I get my I was mixed, say, Mitchell, you want Marshall. Mitchell more involved. No, no, no. Like, Mitchell yeah, yeah, every forgive, down. Forgive me, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> I want to see Justin Marshall 63213. He's a he's a kid that 
I think has a lot of great ability. Can probably get open a little bit, get a little, little bit more, and get him a couple more catches the game. Because when he caught the ball, he was very tough to take down by the Florida State, the not Florida State, the Central Florida DBs. And I would like to see him get a couple more reps and get more involved in the game as well. Ten different guys catching passes there uh, for, for Louisville, you know, and and Ford, I, you know, and it, it was it was interesting. Um, I, this is probably worth hearing. Uh, number four there from Satterfield. I mean, we didn't you didn't hear anything about this. I mean, he had he had been kind of quiet to start the year, uh, and then he breaks out for eight catches, a hundred yards, touchdown. I mean, he was just great. He's everything you thought he would be. Um, but there was a reason maybe he wasn't that great the first couple of weeks. Last week and really really the whole miss week too. Uh, Ford Ford was kind of under the weather. Um, you know, he missed a lot of time in practice and, um, you know, was not completely in shape. And he, he was even tonight was hurting tonight. But um, but he felt a lot better this week, you know, and uh, we were going to utilize him. I mean, I've said that since all camp. And we want to use Marshawn Ford. He's one of our best receivers. And we got to do that. And tonight we were able to do it. You know, he's, this is the first game he's actually felt really, really good um, to put him out there. And then by the end of it, man, he was soaking wet he was sweating like crazy he was tired matter of fact we had to sell him a little bit in the second half because um but but yeah he's he's a hard guy to cover because he's so big and and he's a, he's a great you know great person to throw to malik loves throwing to him because he knows he'll catch the ball so um yeah i mean that that explains a lot if he was you know actually um you know under the weather and he, he said later it was like allergies or something like that maybe turn into a sinus infection yeah we got that go so here was here was uh here was ford talking about it i was sick you know my allergies sinuses you know um, it got me clogged up real real bad you know in my chest and stuff and you know when i'm trying to catch my breath you know i'm coughing up a lot of mucus and stuff like that but um this game you know I, i've been on uh my trainer you know he got me uh medicine and stuff like that so he's been on me you know i'm taking it um, i'm feeling a lot better by uh, by the way so and today it was just, you know, it was, it was just a, a brawl. You know, I wasn't going, I wasn't going to quit for my teammates. You know what I'm saying? Because I knew, that, I, I knew that they weren't going to quit on me. And you know, we got to have each other's backs, and that's what we did today. Yeah, I am. Um, I went. I was talking to Mama Ford at the Ballard uh, South Odom game uh, about two weeks ago, and she said Marshawn's allergies have been giving him hell. And she, she even not on top of the medicine that they've been giving him, she said she went to go check on him and give him some more allergy medication as well. So there some is this serious is true. allergies, man. So yeah, you sounds know, like it turned into a sinus infection. Is what it sounds like. Absolutely, and you know we are the the king of pollen when it oh, comes yeah. to America. So um, so for him to you know try to play through that with all that mucus and build up in his um in his lungs. To carry that padding and all that stuff is phenomenal. But like, if, if we can get Cooley and Watkins more involved and Marshall as well in the game, that can open up the game more for Marshawn Ford to have more catches in the game and be. We well, had is. eight for a hundred. I know, I know. I'm just <laughs> what saying. do you want? I want it all, Drew. I want it all. He I want, had eight I want for a hundred. I want it all. What Drew. are you doing at a high school football game? On you know somebody on my the team? little cousin? Con- okay, my little cousin Connor. He plays at Ballard. Okay, freshman, all right. Because so, yeah. I'm wondering, Parent Johnson, who has you know fine dining every night of the week, is all of a sudden <laughs> at a high school football game eating a hot dog I on don't a Friday. Have fine dining every night of the week, maybe okay, two six nights. nights of the week. Okay, okay. Yeah. whatever, whatever. I only went out one time last week. Texture says the Alderception. That's actually not bad. No, um, no, no. Texture says I call Alderman's uh, pick six relief. We had other loss uh, to shoulder, and that play took that loss and a lot more off uh, off our shoulders. Yeah, I, I'd agree with that. Um, Texture says, "Do you believe? Uh, th- can you believe three games in and Malik hasn't missed with injury?" Well. <laughs> A lot of people hey. could have come out of that game on uh, on Friday. I mean, if, if you know, he work. was injured Friday. He was just playing through it, and I, I don't think it's been stated what the injury is. He and he referred to it as an injury. They called it cramps on the broadcast, but he himself said he suffered an injury uh, late in the game. So something got him there. Uh, you know, it's an actual injury. It's not. It wasn't cramps. Cramps you can just you know, you know obviously just hydrate. Next game. I mean, that's you know. what it, that's what it looked like. I mean, just eyeballing it. I mean, that's why I, I understand tell. why yeah. the uh, the the guys you know calling the game said it was cramps because it looked like oh it's probably just cramps. I thought it was cramps. I'm not going to lie. Tough to play doctor from the press box. That's yeah. all oh, I disagree. Told. I am no. I am a doctor. Yeah. I've been told I'm very smart. Hey, you yeah. know you you don't, I, I, you don't I, want to play I, doctor hey, from the press box. Come on, man. It's Johnson MD over here. You <laughs> yeah, 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 Doctor J. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Again, nothing better than the sideline reporter saying yeah they're over here working on his leg and they're working on his chest <laughs> you know it's like no we got the camera on them they are definitely most definitely not working on his leg so yeah, i think you know? the worst thing ever for a sideline reporter is the little tent they put up you know on the sidelines oh, now yeah. you can't oh, it's see an impossible anymore. job now it's an impossible job now because they don't give you any any information no. they put the tent up there so yeah you have you have nothing and you get to go like on this that happened i'm not going to so quit asking <laughs> no, you're running into a minefield yeah, yeah. the post game there man yeah, how about how about Bama and Clemson actually having close games? Is, do we think college football might be uh, open? Do we think there's 
No. No, no, I'm with them. No. They just had their bad game, a wake-up call. Say I'm going to kill them this week. I'm yeah, like, no. if, if this, the scariest thing in the world right now is to be an Alabama uh, player. Yeah. Because God help you. Yeah, oh, he was Good on luck. that defense. He was oh, he was riding them out to the to the wheels oh, fell off. Of, co- of course game. he is. All right, we'll continue along here. Two six seven nine six eighty is the number uh, to hop on in if you'd like to do so. Four three seven nine six eighty if you want to get on the UPS job text line. Hey, St. Vincent DePaul, they're having their uh, their golf scramble today. We were going to be out there until the uh, the rain uh, sort of threw a big monkey wrench uh, into that. But they do great things, um, you know, in this area uh, that, uh, that you know for the homeless. And if you're thinking about uh, one of the great ways you can help them uh, is to, uh, if you got that car that's just sitting in your driveway or sitting in your garage, and whether it's in working condition or not, you can donate it to them. They'll go sell it, and that money will, will uh, go and be used to uh, you know, help fight homelessness uh, in our community. Uh, and, you know, that's, you know, right now you can do that by a number of ways. You can go to ESPNLevel.com slash donate car, ESPNLevel.com slash donate car. Uh, or you can call Wanda at, at uh, 468-8953. But that old car truck taking up space, turn it into something good. You get a tax deduction is on it as well. Uh, hopefully the golf uh, gets going today. They had 28 foursomes, the single largest fundraiser they have. Uh, it's 10 years old, and uh, their presenting sponsor was the Underwriters Group today, and I think they're going to try to go around noon. But we were going to be over there, but then the, the heavens opened up. Uh, but, again, if you've got that car that's uh, just – and you want to turn it into a tax deduction, you want to um, you know, turn it into something good that help provide food, shelter, and other services uh, in this community to fight poverty and homelessness, ESPNLouisville.com slash donate car, ESPNLouisville.com slash donate car, or 468-8953. You're listening to The Diener Show, presented by OPC Pest Services on ESPN 680, 1057, and 93.9 The Ville. Now, here's Drew Diener and Perrin Johnson. Hey, we got the Ryder Cup this weekend. Uh, We'll have for you uh, on the air on Saturday, starting at uh, 8 a.m., and then on Sunday, we'll join in progress after Ravens and Lions on uh, 93.9 The Ville. So uh, that'll be uh, be coming your way. Process, do you you hate that, too? Like, you hate any time that the Americans uh, have a chance to root for uh, the country? I have no problem with the Ryder Cup. Okay, all right. So not like the Olympics. I don't hate the Olympics either. I'm you just said not you hate the Olympics. Rah, rah, the Olympics. I'm not like it's it's a thing that happens. It's okay. You hate America. We understand, right? That's not true either. <laughs> so hey, listen. I've been in a couple third world countries. America's awesome. <laughs> we'll uh, we'll let you hop into. We got open lines. You know, uh, shocking to me here, but people people don't know what to do with themselves when they have all all good things on the weekend. Like all good things, you had you had a you had a an, you know a walk essentially a walk off win in amazing fashion uh, on on Friday, um, and then you've got you know Saturday you got Louisville live, and yeah. then on Sunday, um, and God I left Teddy out earlier. Yes, Teddy, gonna, yeah. Teddy Bridgewater, won, but he beat the Jags. I'm not gonna. I'm like okay, he didn't you know, make the schedule. L- Lamar beat the Chiefs. All right, and, and so. I'm I'm gonna act like that's a bigger deal than Teddy Two Gloves, as Andrew C- Andrew Siciliano calls him. Um, you know, beating the Jags. You're supposed to beat the Jags, so they beat the Jags. Yeah, and then on top of all that, Drew, you had Montres Harrell at the football game. He yeah. was back in town sitting. It was like a who's who at a table. It was Montres Harrell, our own Luke Hancock, of course, right Andrew McCautry, and then and then you had uh, Maria Taylor as well, all sitting down watching the game. Yeah, that right there in that end zone suite. I just saw. Um, a picture of that, and I was like, "Wow, that that is the that is the table change." Oh, look, Keith Pointer is on the line. Oh, look at that, uh, our legal counsel and former director of Donuts. Good morning. Well, I was just calling to eat the appropriate amount of crow this morning <laughs> since I think I was your last co-host to talk about how there was no way possible that Friday night could have ever happened. Right, so, right. Um, eat it, yeah. Pointer. Eat it. Yeah. I was wrong. Yeah, yeah. You were the voice of confidence though on the other side <laughs> sure, of the screen. Sure. Sure. Yeah. That. No, I was not. Uh, but you know, it was, uh, it, it's good that I didn't, I didn't, I was kind of at the Eric church concert, kind of peeking at my phone, watching plays as they went. And I, I did get to see the, uh, uh, the, the pick six live. So that was exciting, but, uh, yeah, I mean, kudos. I'm glad that they, uh, you know, how was the concert? Now. This is the key question. Is he as good as I think he probably is in person? Yeah, it's pretty good. Yeah. It's pretty good. <laughs> yeah. He's on my list. I got to check this off at some point. I know he's coming yeah, back yeah. here in, uh, I think February or something in the young February, Yeah. But I mean, it went forever. It's, you know, it said it started at eight, it started at eight 45. There's no opening act. It's just him. He comes out and he plays and he went to probably a little after 12. Oh, I mean, are late. you serious? He played over yeah, three hours. Yeah. 
Yeah, it was it was fantastic. When my wife Even was tired, she's like, "Is he done yet?" I'm like, "No, he's not done yet." So, <laughs> wow. But, uh, but but no, good 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 stuff. And you know, um, I was I was really 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 impressed with our quarterback play. I thought he, you know, like like Perrin said earlier, he just sort of willed the team. You know, he was hobbled around and did all the things and, and just continued to make plays. So kudos to them. Surely they don't need some balding, uh, near fifty-year-old fat guy to, to motivate them. But <laughs> to the extent that uh, naysayers may have done some of that, I, I take full credit. Um, but yeah, how was the, uh, the tr- question for you? Did you yeah. get the deer sausages? I totally blew it and left them here did, in the yeah. fridge. Yeah, I came by, picked up the equipment, brought Max in, and totally brain farted. I'm taking them home uh, today, and uh, I will. Uh, Harry Church yeah, played 40 but, songs, as the texter saying. He played four, 40 songs at a concert. What is yeah. this, like the 80s? <laughs> it was unbelievable. It was really, 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 really good. So, yeah, wow. you get, obviously you get an opportunity in February. I highly recommend it. Yeah, looking forward to that, man. So, But, no, I mean, you know, so now the question is, you go down there, you've got to follow up this week with a, with another one next week. So hopefully they'll go to Florida State and, uh, you know, three and one. Well, and, and here's the good. interesting thing I, that I was worried about, and I, I think we may, have t- we may have talked about this as well, is that, you know, um, the, there was a phenomenon I was worried about that if they won the game, there might actually be people not happy with the win because they're really rooting for the coach to get fired. And I don't think that happened. I think everybody enjoyed the win. No, I think so. I think everybody enjoyed the win. I think that, you know, I got to say, I think his play calling was probably a little bit better. Of course, those play calls look better when they work. work. Um, (laughs) You know, uh, and and he kind of had them off. Now, the bonehead of the of the week goes to Gus Malzahn because when that when that ball was intercepted, you just knew that they were going to run the ball, th- you know, twice, and, and and pick up ten or fifteen yards and, and be in perfect field goal range. So when he threw the ball, it, it kind of harkened back to Bobby Petrino against Florida State. I mean, that was a I couldn't believe that he passed that ball. It was it was well, they still a, needed some yards to get in field goal range, though. You know, they, they it's college kickers too, you know. They did, but I mean, if the, the drive before that, they kind of went through Louisville's defense all on the ground, like you know, I think Nick Saban said it best. You know, bleep through a tin horn. You know, yeah. I mean, they, they ran all over them. So I, I think that that's exactly what I was expecting. And so that that pass play was, you know, kind of. Uh, questionable at best but yeah. i'll take it and uh, alderman for mayor yes. so i'm glad for that um and uh, hopefully they can do something better uh, or just do it again on saturday but uh when you finally do get the sausages you let me know how okay I'll send, you, uh, I'll send you a picture of the deer that they came from I got that, <laughs> I got that, that okay this weekend so all right guys all right man show. appreciate yeah. it keith. all right uh keith Bye-bye. porter talking with you keith uh ninth around the Ville, espn 680 so um so, yeah, then in Texas point, points out, as we're talking about Teddy and Lamar, they play each other in two weeks. That'll you be get a the Ravens uh, and the Broncos. So, and, and I tell you what, can we just say this now? Uh-oh. Adam you Gase, can say it. Adam Gase is a, is a player killer. The only thing, the best thing he did was coach Peyton Manning. I know it's a little off topic, but we're talking. Where, where is Adam Gaze now? He's really not know. coaching the NFL. You seen Sam Darnold? Okay. Do you see Sam Darnold, what he did this weekend? He, he, he's resurrected. You have an odd there. hatred for Gaze. Because, because man, he's a he's a player killer. He he kills everybody. Would you hate this face too? Because I do. I of all the things that happened this weekend. I, I, when we talk about the NFL, like talking about the NFL, I he's know. not in the NFL. Hey, somebody's got to get it, man. Somebody's got to get it this week. And like that guy, and you see all the guys that you know, you know Ryan Tannehill's doing big things in Tennessee. You see what Sam Darnold's oh, doing. I, okay, I don't. Adam Gaze? Yes. Okay. He ruins right. people. Uh, fine. Fine. He, he ruins sucks. people. Peyton Manning coached that team. He did it. He just, he didn't run any plays. Peyton did. I'm cons- I mean process of have confirmed that. Like especially after watching watching Sam Darnold what he did this week. I know. I mean the Saints are well coached. They're a good uh, team. Okay. Enough, Adam Gaze. I'm I mean, saying. honest to God. I just wanted to say. That. <laughs> okay. Good. I Adam Gaze sucks. There you go. Adam Gaze sucks. We confirmed it. Two six seven nine six eighty four three seven nine six eighty. But you really, I was worried about the phenomenon, perhaps of of them winning and 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 some people that are malcontent about Satterfield hoping that and not being happy about a win being like damn it they won now you know we're probably stuck with the guy but the manner in which they won the pure jubilation the joy in which they won I don't even think that's a thought in anyone's head and I think the thought is now is looking at the rest of the schedule going okay now let's look at the schedule and, and it's, it's viewed optimistically rather than than pessimistically and so now you're like okay maybe now you can go down to Florida State and it's a 
We got a 3.30 kick ESPN2. Just yes, wondering. two and a half spread. By the way, I want to apologize for that. I just saw the highlights on TV. I had a little squirrel moment. That's why I brought that up out there. Adam, Gage, yeah, I don't, I don't <laughs> get that one. Let's go to Nate up next. Nate, welcome in. Good morning. Fellas. Nate. Nate. All right. I just got done with second breakfast. I had a big old plate full of crow that I had to eat this morning. <laughs> yeah. Yep. And, uh, but, hey, it is what it is. If I, if I got to eat crow, I got to eat crow. So, uh, I think we played a hell of a ball game from what I got to see. I watched a little bit of the highlights. I, you know, I, we were at Holy Cross. I didn't get to catch all of it. But we did catch about the last uh, five minutes with about – Ten parents huddled around somebody's uh, somebody's phone or something out in the parking lot, so that was uh, that was enjoyable. But I'm glad to see I talked to some buddies that were out there at the game. They all said the concessions and everything was was went smooth, and everybody mm-hmm. was uh, happy with the experience. I was very happy with the outcome, and uh, I'm looking forward to the, to. Uh, this weekend against Florida State. Yeah, the only thing that sucks so, is going to be a while before they're back in town. It's like October yeah. 9th, I think, yeah. is the next home game. You'd like yeah. them to be able to capitalize some momentum off this and you know get a good good crowd out there, but uh, unfortunately, well, it's, it's, a, you, it's a ways. You go on the road and take care of business the next two games, you're going to have a pretty good amount of momentum come back. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. You, well, yeah, so, now, now you, you just have to prove it for a few more weeks. That's true. That's true. That's true. So, uh, the pictures from the cook from the camp out. I almost said cookout, but the camp out, man. Yes. I thought y'all had a pretty good time. Damn right we did. You damn right. So, yeah. The, aren't you glad you, did, you just chose that over? Oh, there was there was no football. choice. Like, yeah, no, there yeah, was never a moment right. of well, maybe I won't go to the camp out that's with right. uh, all of his buddies, uh, and I'll just oh, I gotta go to a football game. I gotta go to the Central Florida game. No, yeah, no. Yeah. no. Yeah, do that, do that dad stuff, man. You don't always get to do that dad stuff. Oh, yeah. Enjoy that stuff, man. I, 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 I believe me, I do. Yeah. All right. I just wanted to get in there and let everybody know that I was wrong about what I said last week. Yeah. So. Yeah. Well, but I think there's a plenty. There's there's a lot of that going around, Nate. A lot of that going around. Now we lost Nate. No, there you go. Oh, sorry, I turned him down. He said, "Y'all be." He went. Oh. He went with his dismount. I'm sorry. Y'all be good. Yeah, yeah it's yeah. like Tino's got like thanks y'all for letting me go when he hangs up. Yeah, so I figure you know he he hit the take dismount, care of go cars. So I, Bird hit Ryan. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I hit the I hit the off button. That's on me. We actually got to hear from Bird hit Ryan because like I mean he was out. Is he back on the horse? Right. Yeah. Yeah. So I hope so. I mean, after that, I mean, I don't know how you can't not be back on the horse. I mean, even yeah. it, it's. I mean, even purely emotionally speaking, come on, you, you got to be. I'm excited. saying, when you've lost Birdhead Ryan, you've lost America. Yeah, and and now, uh, you know, I think a lot of people are back in the fold here. So we'll I think see. everybody's back, and I don't know about everybody, but very close to everybody. Yeah, and I, and the other thing is, we played we played all these night games the last two games, so it's easy to watch everybody else play before you go to your game. So I, I feel like um, the other, op- other other side of optimism is a lot of fans have been able to watch other teams in the SEC, ACC play. So because of that, you you can look at the conference schedule. We've we've all watched Florida State play enough. We've watched Wake Forest and what they did recently to Florida State. So I mean, there is some good feeling because you've seen Florida State enough in the last two weeks. I, I know I feel like I have. So I, I mean, and based on how we played last this past weekend, I feel like we can possibly make something happen. In this game against Florida State and going to get a well, I think they're it. expected to. I mean, they're going to be th- this one. You're now, it, it, you've you've now, you know, as you win a game like that, you've raised expectations uh, that that you're going to you know win the game because you're going to be favored. So um, that, now, for a lot of people, you, you've got a Florida State team that. Let's see, I'm just looking at the uh, yeah, it's two and a half and over under sixty and a half um, that you're favored by two and a half over. Um, you know, that is 0-3, but that you have to kick when they're down. These are the teams that, when they're having a bad year, you got to make it continue the bad year. Don't let them get well against you uh, because that can happen a lot of times. I mean, nobody ever, I should think, would think takes a win at Florida State for granted. The, the, this, let's just be realistic about it. The, no, they're still the brand. They're still, right, they're still Florida State. Um, but Louisville, off that win now, um, is, is favored. The two and a half not much. Uh, but but uh, you know but you're not, but you are it does change it you're ex- you're expected to win this I'm it is I'm, I'll be really curious let's say they go down there and lose and then are people like well bleep Satterfield uh, I don't like him oh, anymore flip on a dime yeah. I expect it to or yeah. at least I think that I think people's expectations are are now 
towards Satterfield are at least you know tempered a little bit. I don't think they're ready to kill him now. I think they'll. I think the people that don't yeah. like him will give him time, yeah. even if they lose to human dumpster fire Mike Norvell. Yeah, but I I, th- I think so. I, and you know, it goes back to what you said, Drew. Uh, you circled this game as a, a major a major building block and factor into this season. You said you said this in the summer. You said this all summer long. Key game on the schedule. Yeah, you said this game is a, is a big deal, especially if you don't get the game against Old Miss. You said that it's it's just nauseam. a fork in the road. I mean, it's a fork in the road that if you lose it, you're going down you know negative street, and if you win it. You you now start looking with optimism at the rest of the schedule, but it's it's one of those, you know, where, where you have to back it up. You know, you, you've got you've got to stack a good win on top of another good win, um, and you know, so it, you you're going to lose a lot of the vibe you just gained by winning this game if you go down there and and lose it. And you have you, momentum, build yep. on the momentum. Yeah, and I think I think everybody's kind of in the week to week thing. Nobody's looking down the road and saying, you know. Sky's the limit, and we're going to go to the ACC championship game and all that other stuff. I think everybody's in kind of in the, in, the, in the thing of we're going to just take this week to week and see how it goes. But right now, we got a great building block and a great foundation, and now we can roll this momentum into next week against Florida State. Dex says, I don't think that Sat is good. I don't think that Sat's a good fit, but I'll always be excited for U of L win. I don't know why you can't have both opinions. Oh, you, you can definitely have both opinions. I, I would just think, I hope that people are open to the fact of possibly changing their opinion if he rolls off a good season. Right. I actively have this feeling constantly, and I can tell you he's bought himself some time in my mind as a coach. So I, I have the opinion as well. But I think after a win like that, after showing some creativity on – not even sh- some, he's, he showed a ton of creativity yeah. on offense, he's bought himself some time. There was cre- there, there's was there been creativity in the past. It just hadn't worked. Yeah, I mean, the they, first two games, I didn't see any of it. Well, though. Ole Miss, the throwback, the throwback pass. The, the, just, the, nothing was hitting on Ole Miss, though. Like nothing. Right, but that doesn't mean it wasn't creative. It means it didn't work. Right. So, so I mean, uh, okay, do you think that he dumbed down the playbook – against EKU? Yes, of yes. course he did. I can, like, people try to say, oh, they did Ole Miss too, they no. they're going to lose. No, they no, didn't. Course, no, they just, it, just Ole Miss is just significantly but, better. But, EKU, no. But I'm not going to sit here and say that the EKU uh, wasn't impressive just because of, of the playbook. They couldn't move EKU off the football in the first quarter, in the first half. So I still look at that and wonder what was wrong there with that. What was, you know, that, that wasn't just, oh, we're calling uncreative plays. No, they weren't executing. And that's why I think there was the concern against the, going into Central Florida. It wasn't that, hey, I, you know, I don't, I don't like their, their creativity. It was, I don't like their execution. You know, yeah. and, 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 and there is a thing, and there is a thing where you know you're playing EKU, you know you're going to win the game, so you're not as dialed in as maybe you should mm-hmm. be. And maybe that was the case in that game. And we'll, and we'll just chalk it up as something like that if that was the case. But I, I, you know, the playbook was shown, the creativity was shown, and um, like I said, I just, I just want to, I just want to make sure these guys keep this momentum. But more importantly, Malik, please start sliding, buddy. Please start sliding because I can't, we can't afford to lose you for the rest of the schedule, the rest of the season for for getting an eight yard run in the second quarter. I don't yeah. want that to be the circumstance. I would love to see him get down a little bit more. All right, two six seven nine six eighty. We clear out the phone lines there. If you want to hop on in, you can do that here uh, this morning, and we'll let you. Uh, uh, sound off or you know eat crow whatever whatever your you know favorite uh, thing to do may be hey uh, fitness market they're going to uh, you know hook you up with the, some great pieces of exercise equipment that's where I have my treadmill from that's where I have my weights from my bench if you have if you are adding to your home gym or if you're starting a home gym make sure fitness market is where you go online at the fitnessmarket.com or check out one of the two locations westport road just inside the snyder or plant side drive and waterson trail if you're looking for e-bikes they have a huge selection of those it's Fitness Market. Uh, go in there, talk to Chris, Pat, Sarah Wider, uh, and uh, they'll make sure you buy something you're actually going to use over there in, when you buy your exercise equipment from them. Uh, it's Fitness Market online, thefitnessmarket.com. Are you ready for a job that gets you more? UPS is hiring now. As a warehouse worker, you'll earn up to $21 per hour, and you might even be eligible for a program that helps you with thousands of dollars for college, in many cases, tuition free. Search and apply now at upsjobsky.com. Card Nation, this is attorney Alex White with SueDistractedDriver.com. Our law firm is a team of dedicated attorneys ready to fight for you. If you get injured because of someone else's negligence, their insurance company already has a legal team, and now so do you. If you or a friend or loved one are injured, find your attorney at SueDistractedDriver.com. This is an advertisement.